Hey everybody, welcome to Cut, Transform Glue, and to the second episode of this new Combat Robot series. After making the main hole, it was time to start working on the waist. And as you can see, I made some dummy legs using some pieces of plywood to be able to check the geometry and of course the size of the waist. I chose some random grimaces in my collection and I put them together using some hot glue just to decide the overall shape of it and then it was time to start putting everything together with some CA glue. As you can see, as always, I'm combining griblies, some 3D printer parts and of course some laser cut acrylic, creating this round structure right here which will be below the main hole being the centerpiece of the waist. To make the sockets of the legs, I decided to go with this half sphere right here, which I will attach in an angle, but before I do that, let me just remove some features from this gribri, because later I want to put a ball joint right here. Drilling with this kind of drill on plastic can be tricky because it melts, but the end result after some cleaning was good. I then made this piece right here to go on the back and of course all of the processes I showed had to be done twice. Now as I said, I need the sockets to be sitting on an angle on the center piece and this was kind of hard to, to get right. At first, I decided to try to use my mini disc sander to create the angle, but let's just say it was super time consuming. Eventually, I decided to give up on my mini disc sander and use some other tools like my Dremel. I'm not gonna lie right here, it was kind of a wrestle as you can tell by the state of my work table. But at least the angles were perfect by the end of the process. And here's how I checked if both angles were correct, using a metal ruler to compare the distance from the socket to the middle hole. With both sockets nice and secure right there, it was time to start adding some details to the front and the back of the waist piece, beginning with this one right here. The first thing I did was some sanding and a chamfering of the edges as you can see right here. Then I 3D modeled and printed this piece which fits perfectly to the back of it and of course it has the radius of the center piece of the waist. It was glued to it using some CA glue and of course tons of baking soda. The black gravy was higher than the centerpiece and so I had to quickly 3D model a piece that goes in between everything as you can see right here and of course I had to fill the gaps in between the pieces. For that purpose I decided to go with the material that I hate the most which is car body filler. That stuff is nasty but at least it works super fast and it is cheap around here. A couple of minutes later and before it is 100% set, I sculpted it with an exacto knife. And after that and some sanding, I threw a coat of primer to only then realize that I hated this shape and this design. Yeah. I spent the better part of a week working on this piece and I hate the, the result and yeah, failure is just part of the process. Well, we gotta keep moving, right? So let's start a new ways right away. As you just saw, plywood was the material of choice right here, which I then covered with some two millimeters styrene. Then I changed the shape on the front a bit. And then I glued some pieces of acrylic that I'll use to create a connection point for the main hole of the robot. It won't make sense in a bit. I know this looks kind of weird as it is, but I want to try to keep the design that I made for the main hole on the previous waist try. As you can see, as always, this is a sandwich of a bunch of griblies, some 3D printed parts and some laser cut acrylic. And all of those ingredients combined were then glued to the bottom of the main hole. And which, of course, I attached a big nut right here in the bottom, uh, kind of hiding underneath the, this uh, centerpiece. And yeah, this bolt will be used to, to keep the, the waist and the main hole together, as always. 
I then made this bigger ring right here, which I combined with this black ribby, and of course, both of them were glued to the top of the waist. That all looks super weird and confusing, but it ensures I have a positive grab in between the two pieces, and yeah, that's very important. Then I could start adding some details to the plywood shape. I glued the bigger piece of acrylic to it using some CA and of course I'm gluing the acrylic pieces together using some weld bond glue. At this point I'm also using different types of gribbles like this key from a dead laptop and on the top I'm also adding some smaller beads and shapes. Now, I said earlier on the video that I was going to use a ball joint system for this project. This is an older design that I made for an older project right here in the channel, but I'm sure it will work perfectly for this one. The only change that I made for this one is that it is 30% bigger than the original design. This detail ring right here is also an older design, but I'll fit it right here on the outside of the socket just to make it look more interesting. And after putting everything together using a hole saw, uh, I made this uh, disc of plywood right here, which I'll glue to the back to increase the distance from the bow joint uh, to the waist. It was glued to the main shape using CA as it is strong enough to keep wood together and yeah this right here is the result. I then cut the bow to the perfect size that I needed and it goes from the bottom and it keeps everything connected nice and secure. And then checking the overall design of this new waist, I'm really glad I decided to scrap that previous one and start over. Now I know you're probably thinking that this gap right here is kind of weird and I agree with you. So let me just grab a piece of styrene and use a metal ruler to find the angle right here on the inside. I'll mark the styrene with a sharpie and then I'll cut it with a snap knife. And I'll create a rounded corner using my mini disc center. This is really where my mini disc center shines, adding details to smaller and thinner pieces like this one. And with the angles perfectly matching the features, I could glue it using C8 and the wild bone type of glue. Then I found this gribbly right here in my collection and I felt it would work amazing on the front of the waist on the underside and so yeah I just went for it, made some marks to find the perfect center and used the wild bone glue to fuse those pieces together. I then decided to throw a coat of primer to the waist and I was very happy with what I was seeing. But there's that plywood piece right there showing in between the ball joint and the waist and so I had to cover that and I made this piece right here. And of course as it is already glued to the waist I had to break the design in half to be able to fit in between the two pieces like you see right there. And I used thin CA that will go in between the pieces and, and yeah keep everything nice and connected. And on the front of those pieces I decided to add even more detail and so yeah, again using CA I'm gluing some tiny rings to each hole right there. As I like to say, I'm constantly adding some holes in my projects that will later be some opportunities for detailing. Now I know in this video I was working mainly on the waist of the robot but the back right here of the main hole looks a bit too empty for my taste. And so I grabbed some laser cut acrylic shapes from my collection and I glued them using wild bond glue uh, to the back right there. This right here is a button from probably a Z uh, DVD reader and I decided to glue it right here in between the laser cut acrylic pieces uh, facing backwards because yeah the inside looks much better than the outside. Now with the waist done and the ball joints ready to go, I can start working on the legs of the robot. But that's for the next episode. 
Patreon is what keeps the lights on on this channel. And so, yeah, thank you so much for the amazing support. If you want to join these amazing people and maybe join our exclusive Discord channel or maybe check the SEO files, head over to patreon.com slash cut transform glue. As always, thanks for watching.